Hey DC Collectors, welcome to a brand new episode. Today we're taking a look at the Tomorrow Woman from the Amazing Android series from DC Direct. Now before we get started with this review, if you will, hit that subscribe button and that like button and please share this content with all of your DC Comic fan friends. I sure would appreciate it. Now on to the review. Tomorrow Woman, she was sort of a one and done character in DC Comics. She debuted in the pages of JLA right after that first arc in JLA. And I think that was about five issues. Right around the time the JLA decided to expand their roster and were taking on newcomers, she was one of them. Now, unfortunately, she was not a superhero to begin with. She was a creation. She's an android, amazing androids. She was a creation of Professor Ivo and Tio Morrow, I believe. And uh, they made her to infiltrate the League to destroy the Justice League, how, you know, bad guys do. And, and fortunately, she overcame that evil programming and ended up sacrificing herself to save the JLA and all mankind. But let's take a look at this action figure up close. There we go. Tomorrow Woman. Just a nice sculpt. Now remember, this thing came out around 2000, I think. If I look, let's see, copyright. Yep, it does say 2000 down there at the bottom. And oh, looking at the backstory, yes, I was correct. It doesn't tell me the exact issue that she that she debuted, but she was actually a one and done figure created by Howard Porter and Grant Morrison. There you go. Here's the other two figures in this series we've already reviewed amazo our man we haven't we'll track him down and, and get a review on him soon and a few other figures in the dc direct line man this line was killing it back in the day all right so let's break her out of the package and let's play okay so here is tomorrow woman out of the package and unfortunately she will probably not stand on her own let's see nope she did wow i didn't think we were gonna make it work because of her feet being so close together and so small but she does actually work that is fantastic all right so let's start taking a look at her look at the face sculpt whoever sculpted this did a great job i want to say it's tim bruckner but i i can't i'm not sure on that so so don't quote me on that so remember when we're gauging just how great of a figure this thing is we have to base it on the time period that it debuted and it debuted in the in actually in 2000 so that was right during the time when maybe toy biz was starting to to build the marvel legends line i can't remember what year that debuted it may have been 2001 2002 i, I could be getting my dates wrong here but so we're still in that pre-posed uh 90s toy look and she definitely has some pre-posed uh attributes here um the way she you see the the legs the way they look and the way they're kind of all come to a point down here at the at, at, the, at the heels and and the way the arms look so you know we're gonna have to judge her based on action figures of that time period and i will say you know while this feels the plastic feels a lot better than you know your normal kenner mattel toy biz uh hasbro figures of the time there's still a lot to be left to be desired with this figure in my opinion but let's take a look at the articulation on this thing and it doesn't have much she can turn her head all the way around and of course she can bend her she does have elbow joints which is great for this figure let's see should we take her yes her cape does come off as you can see here i think yeah it does it comes comes off so she can stand a little bit better get a good look at that articulation her arms go all the way around do her legs move I, ah yeah they do it's really tight she's been in that package since 2000 so you know she could do a decent split but of course the way the legs are angled it it's kind of weird she does have ankle articulation to help her stand because without it uh, when she's bending forward now i think without the weight of the cape she would have you'd have to kind of bend those ankles backwards to get her to stand she seems to be sporting this this cloth skirt thing here i'm not a fan of that i am not a fan of cloth goods on on my action figures unless it's something like a hot toys like a 12 inch scale figure and even then sometimes it gets on my nerves um I'm, i just i like the plastic 
and it, you can see on the back it just looks awful the way it's all come the, the seam comes to a head there and it all just folds over not not a cool look for the figure at all lucky in the sculpt looks decent the paint on the face is really thick i mean they really really put a thick coat of paint on that thing and you know it's not a bad paint job by any means it's just bright shiny and thick and i don't particularly care for that there are a couple of issues with the paint right here where maybe some of the skin tone kind of got shoved off onto see right here where some of the skin tone sort of got shoved off onto onto the green but some of that's coming off i think a good you know maybe a good cleaning might help get some of that off but i'm afraid like right there just some of that stuff is is there to stay unfortunately now coming out of the package i could barely bend this elbow i mean it was stuck really good and i was and i tried to bend it and i thought i was going to break it but it didn't it actually bent so here you can see some seam lines i'm not a big fan of the seam lines when you take and, and this is very indicative of a 90s action figure because they you know didn't seam lines were just us oh, just part of the figure leave it on there and paint over it and um i you know you can still see some today in modern action figures but not as well as you can see these right here so this is actually a hard kind of plastic i mean you, you can move it but not much it's not like the mcfarland vinyl uh capes that you have today and of course these capes have these little things here to shove down into the holes right there so to help her give her this look all in all she is she's an okay figure um, not the best but this is the only version of tomorrow woman you're probably ever gonna see because she was like i said a one and done character in uh dc in the world of dc comics you know if, if somebody else made her i would be surprised i would be very surprised unless unless you know grant morrison brought her back for some reason or somebody brought her back and you know somebody may have and i just missed it along the way but uh you know just uh, i'm surprised we actually got a one and done character so you know if you if you are missing your if your dc comics collection is not complete unless you have one of everybody you definitely want to pick her up and you can pick her up on the cheap probably i mean i, I did some some ebay looking the other day and you know she typically runs about 10 bucks maybe eight dollars along in there plus shipping so you're not going to pay a lot for this one if you go and look for her. all right so that's it if you like what i'm doing hit that subscribe button and that like button i sure would appreciate it and also you can uh, find me on dccollectors.com and on social media at dc collectors say goodbye tomorrow woman bye bye <laughs>